Alrighty, so we're going to do some more bike training with Shirni. She's had several sessions since you guys seen her last. My name is David Broderick. Uh, I have a couple companies, but the main one is our pet business, Innovative Canine Academy. And then I also do some uh, personal protection stuff. Uh, I run the club Utah Protection Sports. A couple sports called Mondial Ring, French Ring, and then IPL or Schutzen. Uh, I got into them about 10 years ago and uh, heavily trained for Mondial Ring and French Ring now. What kind of risks are involved with training a dog for personal protection? So, so there's a lot of people that think that the dog, because it's nervous or what they feel is protective, they'll decide to, they'll say, you know, I want to train this dog for personal protection or for protection work. That's probably, in my opinion, the biggest liability is those dogs and people thinking that those are actually good dogs to train for personal protection or for uh, any type, type of protection work. So, um, so let me just make sure I'm understanding sure. right. So you're saying dogs who aren't bred or don't have the right kind of temperament and trying to create a dog using, is that that's what you're saying? Yeah, so I mean, even, even dogs that were potentially even bred for it, if they're nervous, if they're fearful, if they see, um, if they see somebody and they say, you know, that person scares me and so I feel like I have to protect you, I feel like I have to protect my owner or my home or, you know, or myself. You know, the dog feels like it has to protect itself. Those dogs are the worst because they, they look at something and say you're looking at me and I feel threatened by you looking at me. Now I have to feel like I have to protect myself. So those dogs are a liability in themselves because if you train them to bite, they're gonna say, you know what, you're looking at me wrong, I'm gonna bite you. And then they're gonna be good at it. They're gonna know how to do it and they're gonna be proficient at it. Whereas dogs like Shirley, who has a good, stable, confident temperament, you know, she's looking at me and she's not thinking, hey, you know, I can look at her wrong and she's not gonna say, oh, I'm just gonna bite you, right? She's not doing it out of fear, she's doing it for the right reasons and she's doing it because she enjoys biting. Now, now, like I say, if you, if you take one of those dogs that's nervous or fearful or whatever, and they already want to bite somebody because they're afraid, then you go and teach them that it's okay to bite somebody out of fear, then anybody that looks at them wrong, they're going to latch on to, and that's the liability. So in my opinion, you know, if you're doing things correctly, like how we're, how we're training Shirney, in my opinion, there's really not much liability because I could have my three-year-old daughter run by my dogs when they're thinking about biting, and they would never even consider looking at her. In my opinion, there's not much liability if you're doing it correctly. So the, the, the keys are obviously training correctly and then having a good, stable dog to train. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so, so even, even back in the day when, uh, you know, with German Shepherds, German Shepherds were basically bred to, uh, to bite out of what we call defense. So basically the person is cracking a whip or, or acting intimidating and the dog learns to bite out of a state of, I have to defend myself to a degree. Even those dogs, in my opinion, are a little bit of a liability because, again, someone looks at them wrong and they think, oh, yeah, bring it on. And even those dogs might be very confident and stable and everything, but somebody put them far enough into fight that they decided that they had to bite, right? But, so for example, this dog right here actually is a good example. He's a pretty nervous dog. So if they took this dog and they said, hey, I want it to bite because it's nervous or fearful, like every time I walk near this dog and he's laying on a bed or something, he starts growling at me. It's not out of confidence. So if we train that dog to bite, the next time somebody walks at his bed and he feels uncomfortable, he's just gonna latch on to them. I can have a dog like this that I can be petting one minute, it can take a bite from me, I can ask it to out, I can go and pet it, and then it'll go right back to me. Right? Or your daughter could literally be petting her, you could tell her to attack, she'll come and bite, you could out her and your daughter could go right back to petting her. Right? To me that's not a liability. In some cases, when I talk to you guys, I can speak as an authority figure. I know about mink all day long, I know about hunting rats all day long, but I am not an expert in this whatsoever, so that's why I wanted to have David explain that to you guys. Because coming from me, who cares what I think? I have zero years of experience. I have one dog who's like one tenth of the way trained. Like, so it doesn't really matter what I think or what I say. And I realize that, and I don't want to pretend to be an expert on something that I am a total novice on. So I wanted to have David take the time out today to kind of explain that to you guys, let you know, hey, here's the risks. It's pretty minimal because we're doing everything right. We have the right dog. And rather than having that come from me, a total novice who knows nothing, I wanted to have an expert explain that to you. So I appreciate you taking the time. My pleasure. Alrighty, well, let's get started. Ah. Ah.
See how I said she's almost ready to start barking? Well, in that last session, like I said, you know, she's, she's this close, that frustration is almost to the point where it's barking. basically start to activate me. So um, if you go back and watch her first sessions of doing bike work, when I would do stuff, she would just sit there until this was basically in her face and she thought she could bite it, then she would attempt to. So she's pretty much looking for authorization from her owner to say, okay, yeah, it's okay to do what you're doing. I want her to activate me, not because of what Joe's doing, and not because of what I'm doing. I want her, if I stand here, that she tells me to move. So right now I'm trying to, I'm doing a little bit of movement, but I'm not doing very much. I'm not acting like a prey. I'm not doing a ton of movement. I'm trying to get her to activate me by pulling on the, the harness and the leash, barking, vocalizing in any way. And each time she does that, me rattling the stick, which is what we call an auditory stimulator, is kind of a reward in itself. So when I tap here, I tap here on her, on her heart, I tap my leg, every time she hears that noise, I want her to think something good is happening. Almost like as if Joe's petting her. If Joe comes up and says, hey, good girl, good girl, that's kind of what the stick is meant to do. And that's what I'm trying to get more and more out of, is her thinking that she's doing what, what she's supposed to. So if I just stand here, yeah, yeah, what? Yeah! What? Yeah! What? Yeah! So she's not even gonna think about biting them. Move backwards, move around. Okay. 
So you almost want to act like uh, a little kid's beating you up. Okay. So when she bites you and digs in, so wait there, she'll dig in. When she does that, react to that. Okay. Ditch it. Ow. Okay. Okay. Push it. Now do the other one. Okay. Now move it so she sees it. Attack. Okay. Push in. Rest. So flex that. Yep. Attack. And when she hits you, you want to kind of go with it. So like when she hits you, oh. boom. So, okay. So you absorb that impact. Okay. Instead of just being. And move gun. backwards. Okay. So she digs in. You want to move backwards away from her. Okay. Attack. Good. Attack. Good. And you can see like she's a train, like she's got a decent amount of training, but she doesn't do this a lot and you can tell she's already looked. Yeah. And that was, I don't know, six bites or something. That's what this yeah. So you can see like even even the dogs that know how to do it but don't do it a lot, like it's a ton on their job. So you have to you know you have to keep them short. Yeah. It should keep going, but it wouldn't be good for her bite, it wouldn't be good for a lot of things, right? So you have yeah, to watch it and keeping her excited about it and all that, yeah. Well yeah, thank you for letting me do that. That was fun.